So related back to the stumbling blocks, um, there's been a subject that's come up quite a bit in conversation between UV and I related to uh, jewels along the path to enlightenment or um, related to that, I've heard this phrase spoken over and over again. If you meet the Buddha along the path, kill him. I'd love to hear your interpretation of that because I feel like it's very relevant in this sort of transitionary time. Where people oh, might sure. be having, um, yeah, people might be having some sort of profound experiences, and then they think they're the Messiah, and then everybody else believes them because they're so willing to give up their sovereignty to some guru. Um, if you if you meet the Buddha on the road, kill him is is a very straightforward example of what we were talking about with nete nete. It's not this. It's not that. And. When these traditions say that, they mean it. And then often the first thing that people will do is they're introspecting and introspecting, and they see something like they have this amazing experience of like, you know, illumination of uh, infinite light. And then, whoa, and it just blows them away. And they go, oh, that's it. And if you talk to any good spiritual teacher at that point, they'll go, no, that's not it. That's something you can see. I told you, you can't see it. So if you meet the Buddha on the road and you see it, kill it, because that's not what it is. It's not an object. I don't care how much you think you, you've seen it. So the Christian mystics will say, if you see anything, it's an angel. It's not God. So if you see Buddha, well, it's not the seer. That's the seen Buddha. That's exactly who Buddha isn't. Just like that whole list you made of things that you are is a list of who you are not in reality. Um, so if you put, you know, Buddha on that list, that, that wouldn't work either. But it's a very, <clears throat> it was a very, it's a very real understanding. And um, you find some somebody that um, the, the really, deeply appreciated saints and sages of the traditions are ones like in Mahayana Buddhism. Um, well, sort of almost all of Mahayana, which is sort of the second great vehicle of, of Buddhism, um, was created by this gentleman named Nagarjuna. And Nagarjuna was working around 200 years, common era. So it was about six to eight hundred years since the historical Gautama Buddha um, had had lived. Um, and what Nagarjuna was trying to do was really clarify and strengthen this whole notion of how pure awareness itself cannot be qualified. You really can't describe it. You can't see it as an object. And you certainly can't give it labels or names or theorize about it. And so he pretty much um, invented um, this notion of emptiness, which is at least the way it, it was understood from that point on. And emptiness didn't itself mean formless or it wasn't something that you could actually qualify your awareness by saying there's this thing called emptiness and your awareness is the same as this emptiness. Um, so in essence, what Nagarjuna did was an extremely sophisticated dialectic in a sense. But what he did was basically is if you take any word that you want to apply to ultimate reality, that could be the good, the true, the beautiful, could be God, could be Godhead. Um, any term you want could be pure consciousness, pure awareness. Take any term you want and call that term X. And what Nagarjuna demonstrated is that ultimate reality is neither X, nor not X, nor both, nor neither. Well, where does that leave you? <laughs> and where it leaves you is it's almost as if, um, well, if, if somebody comes up and behind you and goes, boo, and uh, you just get, you kind of freeze. And there's just a few seconds where there's no thoughts. You just, and then blah, you get flooded with adrenaline and you know, that two seconds of just pure awareness with nothing, no thoughts, no images, nothing arising. 
That's the type of awareness that Nagarjuna is aiming for, because that's an awareness without content. It's not just the phrase awareness without content. It's an actual awareness without content. You're actually experiencing that. It's the same way if somebody says, well, sort of the same. If somebody says, well, how do you feel from a physical point of view? Okay, how do you feel from an emotional point of view? Okay, how do you feel from a mental or psychological point of view? Okay, how do you feel from all three of those points of view? Same thing happens. You go blank for just a few seconds. And then images or stuff will, will, will start coming at you. It's those few seconds of blankness. That's what counts. Because what Nagarjuna was getting, a quote, he actually would call that, he would use other terms, but he would explain that those terms won't work either because those are just more X terms. Um, but that's what he called prajna, P-R-A-J-N-A. And J-N-A is the same root that we get like gnosis, G-N-O, that's the same as J-N-A. It's also where we just get knowledge, knowledge, K-N-O. And it just means that, it means knowledge, awareness, knowing. Uh, but prajna is pro-gnosis. It's, it's the type of awareness that actually leads to an enlightenment, leads to a waking up. And human beings have two major types of awareness. One is thought. Images, uh, symbols, images, impulses, and so on. And one is just pure awareness itself. But what Nagarjuna won't let people do is just try to describe that awareness and just make a description out of it. Because he's saying, no, that's just more thinking. So when you say awareness without content, that's not really awareness without content. That's just more thinking. You're just thinking that. So I'm telling you, awareness without content is X. And the awareness we want is neither X, nor non-X, nor both, nor neither. And in that blankness, prajna can arise. And that's what all these meditative traditions are attempting to do, is get us out of thinking and into prognosis into an awareness that, because if you actually get into that awareness, it doesn't have an inside or an outside. It embraces absolutely everything that's arising, and you are that, thou art that. And that changes profoundly and forever your concept of who you are and what your true self is and what ultimate truth is. And that's what these great traditions do. And that's why it's such a catastrophe that that, Made, those major systems of waking up have not been included. And one of the main things that they all agree on is if you see anything, that's an angel, that's not God. If you see anything on the road, kill it, because that's not it. That's just more thinking. Buddha on the road is just saying awareness without content. So you're not experiencing that. And Nagarjuna won't accept any answer except your direct awareness of that reality. And you have to have that. That's where Zen gets all its craziness from. And that's why it's very common that you'll have a Zen koan, a Zen story, where the master will ask students a question, like, does a dog have Buddha nature? And everybody knows the correct answer is yes. But the koan here is, Jossie says, no. And that's the answer. You have to figure out what the hell, why do you say no? That goes against everything Buddhism says, except Buddhism doesn't say anything technically until you have that experience. That's what Buddhism is saying. So if you think a dog has Buddha nature, you're just caught up in theory. And so Joshi loudly says, no, moo, is the Japanese. And that's often a beginning koan given to students. Why did he say moo, no? That's meeting Buddha on the road. You kill it. Enter the Future Thinkers giveaway and win our brand new community membership, including in-depth courses, private calls, and more, as well as a supply of qualia, a complete cognitive upgrade for your brain. To enter the contest, simply go to futurethinkers.org slash giveaway and sign up for our mailing list to instantly get our 50-page guide on how to adapt to the future. There are many ways to increase your chances of winning. Enter the competition today. Thank you.
The brand new Future Thinkers members portal is now live. Develop your sovereignty and self-knowledge with our in-depth courses, get access to our weekly sense-making calls, join the Q&As with past podcast guests, and much more. Become a Future Thinkers member today at futurethinkers.org slash members. To stay up to date with new episodes, subscribe to Future Thinkers on your favorite platform. And leave us a review or a like. It really helps out the show. And don't forget to share this episode on social media.